an open letter to students from your female professor. That's right, it's me. I am the actual professor of this course. Thanks for acting surprised. That's always a great way to start off the semester. I realize you probably expected all of your Notre Dame professors to look like Professor Dumbledore, so my appearance may come as a disappointment. Truthfully, I'm also a little disappointed I don't look more like Dumbledore, and I can't wear my Hogwarts robes to work every day, but I digress. I understand where you're coming from. I also understand you're largely unaware of your own biases, but I'd love for you to actively become aware not just so you can grow and develop as a mature, reflective human being and future leader of the free world, but also so you can adjust some behaviors and make life a little less shitty for the women who toiled for years toward a PhD only to be treated as second-class academics. So, since you're literally my captive audience, here are just a few things I think you should know about me and your other female professors. You should know that numerous studies show a disproportionate emphasis on the appearance of female instructors who have to strike the exact balance which nobody is actually able to articulate to us so we get to figure it out for ourselves between not too sexy and not too frumpy and not too made up and not too casual and not too masculine but not too feminine. Students openly comment on my shoes, hair, dress length and eyewear during class. In comparison, a male colleague once joked about being able to pull a shirt out of the closet with his eyes closed and never have a student make a single comment, not one, about his appearance during his multi-decade teaching career. With all of the added wardrobing, personal grooming, dry cleaning, and accessorizing costs expected of us, you'd almost think female professors would get paid more than their male counterparts. <laughs> I crack me up. Seriously, though. You should know that at times, I've been asked to do for free the same work for which my male colleagues before and after had been paid. This is consistent with what female professors experience nationwide, as female academics are more likely to be seen as helpers who provide a disproportionate amount of unpaid service. Service being the least valued part of academic labor and promotion decisions, by the way. Students like you are also more likely to ask your female professors for special favors, Extensions, special meetings outside of office hours, unwarranted grade increases, extra credit opportunities, and so on. And you know what? I, like many of my female colleagues, often do some of these things without complaint out of a legitimate care for students and love for academic work. So imagine how frustrating it is for me to know that even with all the extra labor and expectations placed on me because I happen to look like a lady, my course evaluations will statistically always be lower than those of my male peers, even when I teach the exact same content in the exact same way. Even more frustrating is study after study, which shows that I will be punished in your evaluation for the same behaviors you praise male professors for in theirs. This is true even in online courses when students evaluate a professor with a female sounding name versus a male sounding name. And if I happen to have the misfortune of being a professor who is also a woman of color, the numbers are even worse. Gender nonconforming, forget about it. Dumbledore isn't real, kids. But you know what is? My PhD. And while we're on that subject, it's doctor. Not miss or Mrs. or ma'am or my first name unless I invite you to address me that way. I know you may not think about the impact of this small gesture, but I'm asking you to think about it because it matters. I'm not here for your entertainment or your viewing pleasure. I'm not your enemy. I'm not your mom. I am your female professor. <laughs>